Hey, Dave from Land Therapy again. Uh, I wanted to discuss uh, a cool research article that I found recently. This came out in October of 2022 that uh, specifically looks at the effects of scoliosis exercises on patients with mild juvenile scoliosis. Uh, I thought this was really an interesting article for, for a couple of reasons. One reason is I treat juvenile scoliosis here at Align Therapy. And I found that with mild curves, it seems like we can actually get a really good, uh, a really good result with scoliosis treatment. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but I hadn't seen much research on juvenile scoliosis treatment, and and this research article actually is very interesting how it uh, how it looks specifically at juveniles, but it also looks at uh, at mild curves, and. Uh, I think, I think it's, I think it's a decent research article. There are a couple of things that I had questions on with it, but, uh, but let's kind of dive into it and, and talk about juveniles with scoliosis. So, um, juveniles with scoliosis, mainly that's between four and nine years of age. And there, it's a struggle with kids that are that young to do scoliosis specific exercise. In the research, we're seeing, uh, the term PSSE, physiotherapeutic scoliosis specific exercise being used instead of the Schroth method or the C's approach or things like that. So this, um, this research article looks at PSSE and we'll talk a little bit more about how they, how they did that, but, um, and what they used. But in this, uh, the, they had 52 patients with juvenile idiopathic scoliosis and, um, they wanted, kids with mild scoliosis, so curves that are between 10 and 19 degrees. They kind of use that as the cutoff. So th those aren't really huge curves, and, and a lot of those kids actually aren't referred for physical therapy. A lot of them, it, they're not even picked up on 10 to 19 degrees because um, they're younger and, and we're not necessarily looking for th that yet in a lot of pediatric and other, other environments. So. These are kids aged between four and nine years old. And the, the thing that was interesting with the methods that they used, they used the scientific exercise approach to scoliosis, the C's approach from Italy. Uh, it, I've been using that for the past uh, four years. I use that with my juvenile patients quite a bit. They used that, but they also used some Schroth based principles. And they would do, uh, they would do these for 30 minutes a day. And as I looked into it a little bit more, they, they did a, a one year follow up with these kids and they found that they had, uh, most of them had a reduction in their, in their uh, scoliosis curve and in their angle of trunk rotation. But as I read through the article a little bit more, it talks about how they used things from uh, the Schroth method and they used things from the C's approach. And they, this is a, a study from China. And so it's, China seem, it seems like in China they're, they're developing their own treatment model for PSSE. I don't know if that's totally true, but it looks like that's the model that they're going off of. They're, they talk it as the, the Peking Union Medical College, uh, Peking or Beijing, you know, which, whichever way you want to say it. But they're using a classification based on that. And so what I'm seeing is they're, they're kind of uh, mixing the, the C's approach and the Schroth method. Not necessarily a bad thing. I think there are great aspects of both of those methods, but uh, it, it's interesting that looking through the exercises that they're doing, they're not totally Schroth exercises, and it doesn't look like they're totally C's approach exercises. Um, so I, I'm not sure quite the total conclusion we can, we can have based on the PSSE or, or what was done um, conservatively, but uh, either way, they did see that compared with the observation group, 69.57% of patients in PSSE group had a decreased Cobb angle of more than five degrees, and that was statistically significant. So 70% of the patients had a reduction in their scoliosis curve by five degrees uh, on a Cobb measurement. So if you think about that, the inclusion criteria is Cobb angles of 10 to 19 degrees. So if we have a reduction in curve by five degrees, 
we could have that Cobb angle go down to 5 degrees, or we could have that Cobb angle go down to 15 degrees. Um, either way, you know, 4 to 5 degrees, um, I'm sorry, that would be 14 degrees. Um, either way, that is out of the measurement error, you know, the, the accepted measurement error of 3 degrees, meaning that we're actually seeing a difference. And they were seeing a difference in the angle of trunk rotation as well. So their conclusion was, for mild juvenile idiopathic scoliosis, PSSE decreased the Cobb angle and the ATR, the angle of trunk rotation. That's the rotation that we see on the back when someone bends forward. Uh, so I, I think this brings up some really, really good points. They put in here pictures of some of the exercises that, that are done um, with these kids according to the C's approach and the, and the Schroth method. Some of them are exercises that, I mean, setup wise and things like that aren't quite what we, what we do with those uh, when we're just doing one method or the other. And, and so it's hard to draw accurate conclusions as to one method over the other. But the thing that I see in here, uh, juvenile idiopathic scoliosis isn't something that's been researched treatment-wise very much, and I think there's a couple of reasons for that. One, uh, one reason for that is that getting kids to do scoliosis exercises is really a challenge. Trying to get a five-year-old to do Schroth method exercises is really, it's really stressful as a therapist to get them to do that. Um, with those younger patients, I usually use the C's approach, which is a little simpler for them to understand, but um, it's a struggle with those younger kids. I've had younger kids that do amazing, and I've had younger kids that, um, you know, it's it's almost too challenging to get them to do that. And so it's cool to see that a research article that's looking specifically at this and looking specifically at, you know, with juveniles that are starting to progress, can we limit that progression? The The struggle with all juvenile scoliosis treatment in my opinion, is they have so much, so much more time to grow. Uh, so you have a kid that's diagnosed at age six. While they're growing, that can progress. So who knows when they stop growing? You know, a girl, it could be 13 to 15 years of age. That's a long time that they're going to be needing to do scoliosis-specific exercise. Um, so my goal is to not burn them out on, on exercise but also to do the best thing for their curve. So I think I've seen, I've seen results like this as well with a five degree-ish reduction in, in the Cobb angle when we're treating adolescent idiopathic, well, juvenile idiopathic scoliosis. And, and I think it's definitely worthwhile in treating. I don't think this is something that we should wait on until they become adolescent. I think this is something, or until they need a brace, but I think this is something that can be used to teach them these exercises, maybe not full-blown Schroth method exercises where we're going way in depth into things, because they can't do that, but teaching them these methods and then having them do more of that at home. And then when they're hitting growth spurts, bumping up the intensity of the exercises that we're doing. As they get more uh, ability mentally to do these exercises, increase the intensity of the exercises and the complexity of that. I think that just treating in juvenile ages is not the end goal. We want to get them to have less of a curve when they're done growing. So cool, cool research article. We're seeing more uh, research actually coming out of China for scoliosis. And I think that's partially because they're getting trained more in PSSE. And it's nice to see that someone's looking at juvenile treatment. So it's something that we've been doing for a long time and it's, it's cool to see these numbers, which we do see in the clinic as well. So if you have, well, if you have juvenile idiopathic scoliosis, you're probably not watching this video. But if you know someone that, that has that, and uh, you can share this with them, and I think it would be helpful to know that there is something else that can be done. Parents are always looking for other things that can be done, and, and this is definitely something. This should be part of our standard of care and the research is starting to support that more and more. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I'll do more of these uh, research reviews 
so that you can know what is out there and, and what's supported in the research and what is not. I kind of bias it a little bit to what those things that we do here in the clinic. Uh, but if other things pop up in the research, which I haven't seen as much lately, um, I'll review those as well. So hopefully this was helpful and helps you to make a decision on what to do. And I appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time.